you know, you guys know I like to come here to share with you how the week went, prepare for the next week, just talk, chat, and catch up. How are you all doing? How is everyone doing wherever you are in the part of the world where you are in West Africa, in um, the Americas, in Europe, wherever that you are connecting from, let me know where you're connecting from and do well to um, let us know what questions you would want us to uh, address on our lives. And let's know what videos, what topics have blessed you. We have come, um, we are here to serve you and we are always willing to open up and maybe go out of our regular conversations. We talk about a lot of things here. If you're new here, and you don't know who we are. We are singles, as the name implies, the LBC singles, and a few married people who talk, to come here to talk about relationships, self-development, how to marry the right person, how to do the will of God, how to end up building a happy home. Eventually, that's actually our end goal. And today I'm talking briefly, shortly about Something that maybe some people know about, some other people might know about it, but they have not been paying attention to these things. So as a single person, what are the habits? What are the habits that you should have as you're preparing for marriage, before you get married, as you're living your life all alone? There are some things that you should start to build because whatever you build now is the foundation upon which your marriage um, is going to continue so you don't just change overnight right because you got married doesn't mean that you're going to change overnight and become a different person from what you used to be that's the reason why it's essential that you start to build yourself up in preparation for marriage what are the habits of a christian single Number one, if you call yourself a Christian, you should have a relationship with the Lord. Some people profess to be Christians, but their relationship with the Lord is not, I don't know if I would call it, it's a relationship of catch and, catch and, and let go. You know, they're with the Lord today, and the next time things are going on well for them, or things are not going on as expected, and they abandon the Lord. They follow Jesus like Peter was doing when Jesus was going to the cross. Peter was following Jesus from afar off. And if you remember correctly, he was, it was easy for him to be, betray the Lord because he was not really identifying with the Lord. What kind of Christian are you? Are you a kind of Christian that follows Jesus closely and intimately? That's a question I, I, I throw to you. The number one thing that a Christian single should have as, an, as, as a habit Number one, number one is morning Bible studies and prayers. If you don't have morning devotion, if you're not this kind of person that dedicates a certain time in the day to spend some time with the Lord, your Christian life, first of all, will be shallow. Number two, how would you even hear from the Lord about important aspect of your life? So many people don't know how to hear from God because they don't build or develop a relationship with the Lord. Let's look at it from the simple. I like to go from the simple to get into the spiritual. Many people have friends. I mean, everyone, everybody, practically everybody has somebody that they call a friend. You might not have too many friends, but you have a friend. And when, look at the pattern, the kind of friendship that you have. Do you have a friend that you really love, that you really like, with whom you don't talk? At least, if you're not, if you're a very quiet person, maybe you don't talk every day, but at least in a week, I mean, you, you have a time of conversation and maybe that week you spend it speaking about everything that happened to you throughout the week. But your relationship should not even be like that with the Lord. You cannot say you're having a prayer time just once a week. You should have a constant relationship with God. You should be able to dedicate the first hours of your day God, to pray, to read in the Bible, just start, you can start with just two verses in a day. You read the Bible, 
you think and ponder on what you have read and you let the Holy Spirit do the work for you. The Holy Spirit will go and explain to you, will go on to impress upon you the message in that passage that you're reading. You'd have God telling you, warning you, explaining to you, opening your eyes to some things that you did not notice. That's the importance of daily morning prayers. This cannot be overemphasized. Like, I don't know how much to talk about this, but starting your day with saying, thank you, Jesus, no matter how short that time is with the Lord, is paramount to your life as a Christian single. Because after marriage, you'd have to start having morning devotion with your family. But the fact that you're having morning devotion with your family does not take away the place of a personal time with Jesus. If you are not doing it as a single person, it will be difficult for you to do it when you get married. Number two, you need to work on exercise, healthy living. I know so many people will not know that I'm going to mention this. But your health is very important. As a, as a Christian single, whether man or woman, you need to pay attention to your health. Whatever cleanliness, neatness, eating healthy, cleaning your body, general exercise. You know, as a Christian, you don't just, I mean, you, you, sh you should eat food, but you should also eat healthy. Most importantly, you should eat healthy. Whatever go into the, goes into the body is very important. You should pay attention to what you are taking into your body because that will really affect how you look. There was a time in my life, I love to eat candy. Oh, sorry to say, I am a candy eater and I love junk food. I will eat. As a single person, I like to eat my cookies, my biscuits, my, I don't know, pastries, cake. I mean, I was not really a cake person, but like, you know, this puffs, meat pies, anything junk was my favorite kind of food. And definitely you can, you go, you guessed right. I had a lot of health challenges. My iron was always low because of course, when I'm eating those things, I'm filling my tummy with fillers and it's not adding any, anything good to my, to me as a whole, to my body as a whole. Well, I wasn't really a big person as you can see, I'm not really big. And I was even tinier than this before marriage. I wasn't exercising. I just lived my life. My body is good. I'm doing well. Why do I need to exercise? I and mean, that's it. But I came to realize at a certain time in my life before I got married that everything that you put inside yourself, eating healthy is very important. And I, of course, had a shocker. Someone passed away, someone very young had cancer, and then I started to pay attention to my health. I was like, okay, I think that I need to eat healthy. And I began to eat healthy, but don't wait like me until you have a shocker, until you have a friend, a very young person that diagnosed with cancer or one incurable disease before you start paying attention to your health. Health is wealth. Pay attention to your health. Go for your routine yearly checkups. Because sometimes you don't know what is going on in yourself. As a lady, sometimes we use public toilets. And sometimes some ladies have caught like toilet diseases. Like on our campus, we used public toilets where everybody came to use the toilet. And sometimes you find yourself having itch. You are itching down there and you don't know what it means. As a young, naive person, you are not sexually involved. You, you, you don't know what's going on. But don't just do a self medicate don't self-medicate and try to solve your problem, but go for an extensive checkup. So if you have had any form of sickness, health care, don't just take it for granted. Do a general checkup. Mention it to your health practitioner, your medical doctor, so that they can check these things out. Many of us single ladies, especially those who are dark skinned, blacks, our race. Many ladies don't even know that they have fibroids. So these are some of the things that you should pay attention to. If you do a regular check, and maybe sometimes before you get married, you can also do um, like a general you know, ultrasound. You can check your tummy. And if you think that you'll be having a kind of 
pain, very painful menstrual set, um, circles and you don't understand why you feel so much pain or maybe you feel something in your tummy. There are so many people that just ignore and don't pay attention to these little, little things that would have prevented some problems for them in the future. If you are a man and you have had any form of, um, I mean, the doctors would call it sexually transmitted diseases, but maybe you got a toilet a bug, you know, from using public toilets and maybe you didn't clean up correctly and you had a toilet disease, itchy um, feeling in your private part, go and check these things because this can become permanent problems for you. And some people have issues finding it difficult to conceive and they don't know that it's something that happened maybe in their childhood, it was not well managed and it becomes a problem for them in the future. A problem quickly arrested is a problem solved. So don't ignore anything, any scare, anything that you notice. You see a, a boil on your body that looks funny, a scratch. And when you look at it, it looks so funny. You don't understand what it means. Don't just say, ah, you know what? I'm just going to put some rub, some ointment on it and I'm good. Sometimes if it looks really funny, go and check it out. It might be a skin cancer. It can be anything. If you have an injury that is not going and you are treating it for so long and it's continued to get worse and worse, you might have diabetes. You, you don't know if you don't check it out. In essence, what I'm saying, going straight to the point is that don't neglect your health. Pay attention to these things and you'll be happy that you caught it on time. Number three, consistent bedtime routine. What's your bedtime routine? Did you sleep at 3 a.m., at 4 a.m., and then you have to wake up at 6, and then you're dozing off on, your, on the public transport, and your, your sleeping pattern is never stable? Do you have what you do at bedtime to help you to wind down? Some people respect the routine, they follow a routine, and you see that because it looks like their life is all planned out. So because they sleep early, they're able to wake up early, and they're able to be more productive in the day. If you have not rested your brain, this brain of yours cannot do all the thinking that you need to, you need to give it. You need to think. If you're going to be a, a fulfilled person in life, you need to think. If you need to start a business, you need to think. Everything that you need in life, even at work, sometimes you need to carry out very difficult projects. You need to think. I can tell you myself when I have meetings, anytime I have a team meeting and I've not slept enough, the next day at the meeting, I'm grumpy, I'm tired. I pick at clients, maybe the way an email is sent. I'm just like, why, why, is, why is this message written like this? I just pick at everything. The root cause is that I have not slept enough. So if you have not slept enough during the night, you find that your day is so long and not as productive as, as when you sleep enough. Give yourself a minimum of six to eight hours per night. What other bedtime routine do you have? Do you read? Some people read before they go to bed, and that's a very good thing. I used to do it a lot. Sometimes I still do it when I can, but most times I do audio books on my phone. So either I read it from my phone, so I, I go to the library rather than getting the physical book because I realized that I was always late. <laughs> We return in the books. I have some books that I used to be an avid reader, okay? But with family and children, ah, I, I just, I don't know what would have happened if I was not an avid reader before I got married. So, that, and that's, the, that's what we're talking about. This is the habits that we're talking about. If you're so, um, I was such a person that read or read a lot. But when I got married with a new baby, it was difficult to keep up with my reading culture because my baby will snatch at the book, because my baby is crying and I cannot concentrate and I lose track of where I'm reading and maybe I'm so tired with the day or maybe I need to have some time to just chat with my husband. Something, something's happened and I'm not able to keep up with reading 300 pages, 500 pages in three days. So what did, what did I do? I had to improvise. That's some of the things that I'm going to be sharing more about this. How do I improvise in my life to keep up with my professional life? But I'm going to give you a small tip. What I did was that I went to the library and I realized that the library has an app and you can just download 
uh, books that you want to that you'd want to read. So I'll just download. I just download the books and I read. And when it's due, it just goes off. I don't have to pay for being late in returning the books. That's another hack. And the audio books that I get from the library has helped me a lot. When I don't have time to sit down and open the book, you know, page by page, I just put on the audio books, even if I'm doing like my laundry, folding clothes, pressing clothes, cleaning my, my house, the kitchen. I just put my phone in my pocket, put it in my ears with my, my earpiece. I just put it in my ears, you know, it, it, this is a wireless earpiece. I just put it in my ears. I don't, I don't need to have to fight with the ropes. I don't have to worry that my, my phone is going to fall off. I have this. I put it in my ears and I'm listening away. And I pick books that, um, that are var varied. So I try to vary the books that I read. I do self-development. I do marketing. So those are the kind of books that I love to listen to. I do like motivation. I do like purpose-driven life. You know, what are the books that you, you like to read? Share also with other people so that we can we can learn. I like I like to listen to Warren Buffett. That guy is, he is, oh my God. When I read him, he blows my mind every time. I listen to Warren Buffett. I read, I listen to, I've listened to this guy even. Um, I mean, I have a list of people that I listen to. Uh, there's this guy that I don't know if you have, you've ever heard about him, but David Chilton, David Chilton is his name. If you have not read this book, The Wealthy Barber, you need to read it. It is an interesting, informative, educational book. I read this book and I quickly called my insurance broker and I was like, hey, you need to set me up on this stream. I realized that I had some savings, but I was saving it in the wrong place. So these are some of the books that saved me, that helped me, because I still read them over and over again. There's some books that you read once and it's not enough. You have to read it again and again. So what kind of books do you read? Do you just sit down and read romance novels? Some people are like that. They just love romance novels. Well, if you don't learn anything that will add so much value to your life, except if you want to become a writer. As a young person, yes, I would read some nice romantic novels that would tell me about the life after and everything. But sometimes everything that happens in the novel are not so real, except if you're reading a novel that comes out of a real life story. But nowadays I've grown, I've matured, and I want to read anything that will add value to my life. At the end of every read, I ask myself, what did I learn from it? Those are some of the things. If you, have, if you don't know a list of books that you can read to make you better, in marriage, in relationship, in friendship, in business, in your career, ask questions. And if you, if you want any help, ask us. If you have any requests about books, you don't know what books to, to read, let us know. Music. What kind of music do you listen to before going to bed? It affects your thoughts. You know, the brain gets to that, in that unconscious state when you're sleeping, but sometimes, whatever leftover you've had before going to bed kind of replays in your head. If you're, before going to bed, some people read the Bible, they, they let Bible reading go run through and that kind of helps them. So like their brain keeps thinking, their subconscious mind is thinking about the word of God. Some people read, as I said, some people listen to podcasts, some people just read first and then pray and then go on into their sleep. So they, they let themselves go to sleep just after they have prayed. So whatever it is that is working for you, keep doing it. But make sure that it's adding value to your life. Number four, positive confession. As a Christian symbol, single, the confession that you made, the confession that you make matters a lot. What do you confess? Are you one who always says, oh, my life is finished. Oh, I'm not going to get anybody to marry me. Oh, I'm too old. Oh, I don't think that there's anything that will come out of my life. Oh, um, everything is so hard. There are no men. There are no good women. Um, my life is just talk. No, change your confession. Number four habit, I'm going to mention it again, is the positive confession. Be that kind of single that says, I am going higher. 
positive confession is you saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Positive confession is saying, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of God, the Lord in the land of the living. What is your confession? Are you looking around in your nation, whatever country you are in, and saying, oh my God, things are not working out. Even if you hear so many stories, and there's so many of your friends who have told you that, oh, men are just this, men are just bad, men are evil, there's no good men anymore, you know, there are no good women anymore, all women are cheats, women don't think about your good, they just come to take. If you keep confessing those things, whatever you confess, you are you attract. So be careful about what you confess. Are you one who tells yourself, I am going to be the best of what God wants me to be? I'm going to get the woman that God has for me. I'm going to marry the best. I'm going to meet someone who will love me for who I am. Whatever you confess is what you attract. So I want you to go back, think about how you think, change your confession. Most times what comes out of your mouth is what you think. Whatever you ponder about. So that's why you need to change who and where you hang out. Start from there. Change where and who you hang out with. There was a time I was part of a group of friends who would always say, mother-in-laws are bad. Mother-in-laws are evil. Mother-in-laws are not nice. Mother-in-laws are this. Mother-in-laws are that. And one day I sat to myself and I'm like, why are we always saying that mother-in-laws are this, are that? Are all mother-in-laws bad? And I told myself I needed to change that crowd. I need to stop talking to this set of ladies. I need to stop associating with them because I need to flush out those thoughts out of my mind because me, I want to have a beautiful relationship with my in-laws. So if you are a young lady and you have read so many stories about girls who have been maltreated by their in-laws, who are sad, who are unhappy, who have you know, who have been thrown out of their marriages and then you just stay and keep listening to those kind of conversations, it will affect how you relate with your in-laws in the future. Start to look at it from a positive light. Start to listen to other people who will talk about how you can have a better relationship with your in-laws when you marry. Listen to other talks and other mindsets that say that people have gotten married and build businesses and build with their husbands and become great. Join that kind of crowd. Listen to those kind of people and begin to have those kind of self-talks. I'm going to get married and I'm going to have a beautiful home. And maybe you might, I'm not praying any bad for anybody, even if you get into a marriage where your in-laws are a little bit difficult because your mindset is right it will help you to behave right. And you might not fall into the trap of reacting to their actions. You might be able to change them and make them like you eventually because of a beautiful attitude. Number five, your attitude. Your attitude, what's your character? How do you behave? I was listening to someone who shared a testimony about how she, she got married very late. Some people might have heard that story. Somebody shared that story with me and it kind of touched me. That story is about a lady who was meant to marry a guy abroad. She met a guy abroad and they got talking. But before then, she had worked in a place where she didn't like the accountant or so. There was somebody she didn't like in that office. And she was so, so, so mean to him. She spoke so bad to him. Now, many years down the road, she got into this family with this guy who lives abroad and sent her to his family to go and know them, just to like present herself to them and know them and stuff. And she went there. Unfortunately, one of the days when she went to visit, this accountant that she has been so mean to talk so bad to, never give an opportunity to even express himself, was an in-law 
I mean, to her, was meant to be an in-law. He was a brother or a relative to her husband-to-be. Definitely, he said something to the family and everyone turned their back on her. She missed that marriage. She eventually got married, but she learned a lesson from it. She learned a lesson from what happened to her. So what's your attitude like as a lady? How do you behave? How do you comport yourself in the public? You don't know who is listening to you. You don't know who is watching you. You don't know who eventually will become an in-law or someone you'd have to relate with very closely in your husband's family. Start to work on your attitude. Start to work on your character. Start to work on your reaction. Some people, as soon as you offend them, they're like a, they're like a bee. Like, like you have come to the beehive and taken some honey from them and they are ready to sting you. You read them online, the way they respond to people, they'll call you names and these are Christians. Unbelievers can do those kind of things. And we know, okay, they are unbelievers. Christians, should we find this kind of attitude among Christians? If you're a Christian lady and you say all those foul words, and you can wash anybody down to their underwear. You can insult anybody. You need to change. Your attitude matters a lot. That's one of very important habits that you should cultivate as a Christian single lady. Work on your character, work on your attitude. Try to not react to everything that's been said about you. Some people talk to you out of their own frustration. That's how I look at it. I look at people and I say, you know what? This person needs help. And when I see someone as they needing help and not me being the problem, especially if I've not done anything wrong and I'm not being corrected, but they're just picking at me, trying to find fault, trying to provoke me. I just tell myself, you know what? This is not me. And you're not going to push me to say something that I would regret later. I would rather keep quiet, bottle up my anger. When I'm offended, really offended, I've built myself up to keep quiet. I wouldn't say anything when I'm so, so mad. When I'm so annoyed, I won't say a word. So if you can work on yourself, tell yourself, find a mechanism, find a way to do something that will stop you from reacting when provoked. You can count, you can decide to count to 1,000. You can decide to think about a song. You can decide to start praying. That's another thing that you can do. You can just decide to pray. While they're talking to you, just start to mutter word to the Lord. Tell the Lord, help me, I can't do this, but I need your help, I need your grace. At such a time like that, sometimes you don't know. You just, you just come out of it and feel, I don't know how I escaped. I don't know how I managed not to respond to this person. That was the grace of God helping you. God can help you, but try your best not to react to everything that's said about you. For a man, what's your attitude like? Are you this kind of very stingy person? Are you this kind of careless person you don't care? Are you this kind of person that believes that there are so many fishes in the water and you're not ready to build any relationship? You are not, you know, some men, they don't build any relationship. And all of a sudden they just wake up and they realize, oh, I need to get married. <laughs> that reminds me of my campus days. Some men are very, can be very hard. They are not nice. They are not friendly. They are so bossy. You know, they 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 don't want to. They don't build anything. Like they don't have any relationship. You as a lady cannot look at them and say, ah, "I wish my husband can be like this, brother." Just because of how bossy you are, you order sisters around. You say, "Hey, come and sit down there." All right, yeah, there, no kind words. You have no kind words to say. You never appreciate somebody even for whatever good they've done. You never see any good in anything that anybody has said. If you're that kind of man, your sudden waking, wake, awakening to realize that, oh, I need to get married now, might not just produce a woman immediately. Ladies will run away because they'll be like, oh my God, who is going to marry this brother? Who can deal with this? So your attitude matters a lot. Your character matters a lot. Are you a giver? Are you someone that people notice that you can give? You just love to help people. You're just nice. Whether man or woman, build on your attitude towards giving. 
Don't be someone who only thinks of themselves. And giving does not have to do with only money. Giving also has to do with time. Giving has to do with talent. Can you help someone without expecting anything in return? You never know who you're going to get married to. So it helps to work, to work on your attitude, on your comportment, on your reactions, on your actions, on your words. The words that you speak matters a lot. Sometimes even your, your unspoken words, your attitude. Some people are not verbally aggressive, but their, their body language is so aggressive. You are almost scared of them. So work on all these things as a Christian single. These are very important things that will help you towards um, having uh, a Christian home, a Christian marriage. Tell him I'm coming, okay? Okay, tell him just give me five minutes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I have a, another meeting that will soon be starting. And I'm running out of time, but I'm just going to run through quickly and tell you the last three points. Number number six, um, self development. So learn a new skill. Are you learning a new skill? Do you are you a, a, an engineer? But you realize that computer science is what would maybe take you to where your dream is, what you're expecting out of life. Then you can pivot. It doesn't harm to learn something new. There is no harm in learning something new. My friends, please don't be rigid. You want to be a teacher. Even if you studied biology, you can end up, you can end up becoming a course creator. A course creator is a teacher. So learn to be this kind of person who is able to diversify able to do other things, willing to learn other things. That's part of self-development. As a young single Christian, young man or woman, now is the time to build on your future. You have all the time now. You have no children. You have no husband or wife. You, you have nobody sharing your time. Try to use this time now that you're single to build your future. Learn anything that you need to learn. So we... You want to learn how to knit. You want to learn how to formulate. You want to learn how to become a speaker. You want to learn how to edit. You want to learn how to, you know, brand. Whatever it is, try to get out of your comfort zone and learn new things. You want to learn how to bake. You want to learn how to cook. Maybe you don't know how to cook and you want to learn how to cook professionally because you don't know which family you're going to get into. You might get into a family where they really like, you know, oriental continental food. But if you have learned these things now as a single person, you would surprise your partner. They will be, they will be surprised to realize that you can cook some of these things, other food, Indian food, uh, Chinese cuisine, French food, French baguette. You can bake croissant. There's so many things that you can do. Use your time. Don't sit down there and feel, oh, now I'm just bored. I'm just tired of life. I'm just disappointed. No, my advice to you is that you can use this time that you are single to learn new things. You have enough time to practice. You have your room. Everywhere is just quiet. You don't have to cook at any certain given time. Any small food that you cook is enough to carry you maybe the whole week. As a married woman, as a married man, someone is going to start to share from your time. You remember I told you this. So use your single time and days to self-develop. Learn the art of marketing, for example. Learn whatever it is that you need. Your passion. What is your passion? Your passion might be different from what you studied. But you can build on your passion and you might become a big business, a big family business that will replace your income in the future. Self-development is very important. So number seven, money of financial management. As a single person, learn to start to build on your budget. Do you have a budget or do you just spend? Any money that comes must go. You cannot see money. It has to go. It just has to go. As soon as you see money, anybody gives you money, you have a gift, you, you get your pay, it has to go. You find something to buy. You buy another cloth and another cloth and another shoe and another, I don't know, another gadget. Some men, they're not into clothes, but they're into gadgets. 
they have a stand for this, they have a stand for that. And even if it's car, they have this car, they have that car, they're always investing in those things that does not add value to their lives. So if there is, you have money now, use it to start to build your financial life. If you're living in this part of the world, you can start to invest into your future. You can open a retirement savings account, an RRSP, and start saving. Retirement savings plan. Registered retirement saving plan. Whatever it is, you can start to build into your retirement savings plan. And when you take that money, don't let it just sit there in your account. Take it and invest it into mutual fund, segregated funds, GCI, GCIS, that's, gov that's the government um, kind of plan, that investment plan. I, I don't know the real term now. When I get it, I'll, I'll put it in, in the description section. So if the earlier you start to invest, investors have told us that the earlier you start to invest towards your retirement, the more time you give your investment to grow. I don't know, just recently I started to study comp compound interest. And I thought I was almost beating myself up. I was like, what? I started investing into my retirement savings plan, my tax-free savings account. Since I started working, even as soon as we came to Canada, I started, I'm, I'm a saver. I'm this kind of person that likes to save, okay? I save money, but I save it into my checkings account. But now I'm realizing that I should take that money and invest it into funds that will grow over time. I don't have to do anything. I just need to keep putting something little. You can open your tax-free savings account with $10,000. You can open your registered savings account, your RRSP with $5,000. Your, when you get your returns, you know how we file taxes at the end of your tax season, if you have paid too much taxes and you have done a lot of charity in this part of the world, when you pay your tithe and your offering, you pay into uh, different kind of like you, um, charity organizations, they give you a tax refund. So when you take that tax refund, some people, some young people have invested, are faithful with paying their tithes and they get sometimes $10,000 back from the government. Some people get $5,000 back from the government. Some people get $3,000. 2000 whatever the thousand you get at the end, at the end of the tax season after you find your tax take that money open a tax free savings account or open an RRSP put that money somewhere where it will start to grow make sure that you're discussing with your financial advisor or your banker and asking them is this money in a pool or in a fund that has what we call compound interest one day we're going to talk more about this because if you understand the rule of 72 that all the banks understand, you realize that if you're saving money in your checkings account or your savings account, you are doing yourself harm. You're just leaving the money for the bank to do whatever they want with it. So people have what they call fixed accounts. So they put money in a fixed um, account where it's been invested into stocks and all those kind of things and then they get returns. But pay attention and ask your banker, is, are you doing a simple interest fund for me or are you doing a compound interest fund for me? So if you're doing the compound interest, at the end of you know, it's a calculus. So this is what you do. 72 divided by how many percentage it is that that fund is going to pay you on a yearly uh, basis. You divide that, you will get an amount. That amount is the time that it will take for your money to double. And if you keep adding a little money, you realize that before you're 60, you might become a millionaire in dollars. And that's money for you when you retire. <laughs> guys, this is fire. This is free financial information that I'm giving you guys for free. I have to pay for this, okay? But I'm still learning, okay? I'm not perfect yet. I'm still learning this game. I'm still learning this rule because I have a colleague who told me that and I'm ready to retire. I'm already a millionaire. This guy has been working very early in his life and he has been investing into different, all these kind of funds. And then whatever he gets as returns, he takes it again and he invests into more riskier um, funds where, I mean, it's very volatile and you might lose money if you're not smart. But because he has been doing this investment for so long, then he's able to take whatever he gained, not his capital, to play around. Very risky, but very profitable. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm out for learning. Now I just want to build, build, build my financial portfolio. 
we'll have a, another session with a more professional where we'll talk more about these things. And I hope that you're being blessed by this that I'm telling you. So if you don't have some savings, please try to save. I am begging you, try to save at least 10%. If you can't do 10%, do 5%. Save at least 5% of your monthly income and invest it. Invest your savings so that it's growing as you age. Final point, the practice of gratitude. Are you someone who is always grateful? Are you grateful? Are you, do you practice gratitude in your life? Do you, are you always this kind of person that you are thankful? Someone who is, who practices gratitude is someone who, this person is happy because you look at the breath in your nostril and you say, thank you, Jesus. And let me tell you a secret about the practice of gratitude. When you practice gratitude, it releases happy hormones. <laughs> I don't know. That's my theory, okay? It kind of makes you happy. Because as the Bible says it, count your blessing, name them one by one, and you will realize what the Lord has done. If you don't count your blessings, if you don't look around you and see all the good things that God is doing in your life, you won't, you won't even know that God has done a lot for you, a lot for you. You are healthy. Thank God. So many people are in the hospital, in pains. But if you're healthy, and you can think, and you have some form of income, no matter how small it is. Ah, it's enough to thank God that you have food, that you have shelter, that you have friends, that you have loved ones, that you have hope, that you have salvation. Those are enough for you to be grateful. Practice gratitude. Start thanking God for, God, I thank you for my voice. God, I thank you that I can smile. God, I thank you that I can see. God, I thank you that I can hear. God, I thank you that I am healthy, that I ate today, thank you. That I'm going to bed now, thank you. That I'm not homeless. I have a home, thank you. And also thank God for the difficulties that you face in your life. I know this is a hard one. It's hard for people to say thank you that I'm waiting for this job and it's not coming out yet. Thank you. That I'm still waiting for a husband or a wife and I've not found one yet. Thank you. That somebody said no to me, the person I proposed to said no to me. It's hard to do. But my friends, if you start to practice gratitude, God will surprise you. Dance and thank God everything that you have for everything that he's going to do and for all that he has done in the past it is gratitude my friends practice gratitude be grateful to god for everything and that concludes my life for today i don't want to waste too much of your time but if you have learned one or two things from this video please do well to share this video with your friends comment like share and see you next week. If we do not have a program, we will be here for another live next week. Thank you for everyone who hung in there. Thank you so much for connecting, for joining this live. Have a pleasant, beautiful week. The week is starting next week. Practice these few things. Even if you don't practice anything, start by practicing gratitude. And you'll see that God is going to surprise you in this new week no matter what is going on in your country wherever you are believe god for the best he will work things out for you he will turn things around for you good god bless you see you next week to subscribe to the youtube channel like this video share the video follow the page and let more people know about what you're learning there. ciao